Hey everyone, Forrest here, and today I wanna do a breakdown of the basic panel or light and color panel sliders in Lightroom or Lightroom Classic. What I wanna do in this video is break down not only what each of these sliders do, but more importantly, how to drag them in the specific order that will allow you to get the most out of your images. Now we need to make something very clear from the beginning. I'm gonna be editing raw photos, and I really believe that to get the most out of Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, you should be shooting raw as well. Now note that raw photos are raw. They're not meant to look amazing out of the camera. And the way to think about it is, in my mind, the job of Lightroom Classic's basic panel, or Lightroom's light and color panels, is to take the raw photo and return it back to what you saw with your eyes. The whole idea here is to get the image from its raw form back to what reality actually looked like. And that's our goal with these. Now there are a ton of other sliders in Lightroom, and those to me are the sliders for creative expression. And that's not what we're gonna be focusing on this video. This video is gonna be focused on getting the image from a raw form to looking like you saw it when you were there in the scene. I'm gonna start by talking about the controls that we have for exposure and contrast. These are gonna be in the basic panel for Lightroom Classic, and they're gonna be in the light panel for Lightroom. Now in here, my first slider on every photo, regardless of what it is, is the exposure slider. Exposure is there to determine the overall brightness and darkness of your photograph. And I recommend that if you're watching this video, open up your own copy of Lightroom or Lightroom Classic and follow along as we do this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drag exposure left and right, and we're not gonna focus on any specific part of the image. Instead, we're looking for the whole image to look as properly exposed as possible. Now, this might mean that some areas get a little bit too bright, or some areas get a little bit too dark, but the goal is that overall, your exposure looks proper when you're done dragging this slider. To me, I think this looks good at about plus 0.85. Now from here, I'm gonna jump down to the blacks slider. The black slider is very simple. It controls how dark do you want the darkest thing in the photo to be. And in general, we want a little bit of our images to be pure black, black without detail. So what I like to do is drag my blacks slider to the left or the right until I get a few bits of the image to have no detail in them. Now, I prefer to adjust this slider visually, but if you want a little tool to help you see where areas are going pure black, on a Mac, hold down the Option key, and on a Windows machine, hold down the Alt key, and hold down those keys while you drag the slider. And we can see here, as I hold down Option, it's showing me overlaid over the photo which areas are turning pure black. Now, obviously, I don't want too much of the photo pure black, but what I'll usually do is I'll go down until just a few little speckles are black, and then I like to un release the, the alt or option key and kind of see where in the image that is. And you know what? I don't mind if some of those areas go pure black, that's gonna anchor the photo and it's gonna give us nice contrast. Now the next slider is whites and whites does the opposite. It controls how bright is the brightest thing in the photograph. Now here we wanna be a little bit different. While it's okay to have some pure blacks, generally we want to avoid pure whites. Now there are very many exceptions to this, so don't keep this as like a hard and fast rule. But for me, I like to get everything as bright as possible without losing detail. So again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I like to adjust visually, right? Obviously just look at the photo, but as a good tool, I can hold down the Alter Option key and that will show me where I start to lose detail. And for me, I'm gonna go up until I start to lose detail and then I'm gonna back off until all my detail returns. Essentially, I'm getting the image, the brights, the whites, as bright as I can get them without blowing them out, without losing information there and essentially making areas of pure white. All right, our next sliders are highlights and shadows. Highlights and shadows don't control the brightest stuff or the darkest stuff, but they control the brighter regions and the darker regions. So not the whites and blacks, but the brighter and darker areas. And these, I don't have any sort of keyboard shortcut. These are purely creative sliders. And I think you'll find that highlights and shadows 
allow you to get your image much closer to what you saw with your eyes when you were shooting. So in this example, I know that I saw a lot more detail in the sky when I was photographing, and that's highlights. So I'm gonna bring the highlights down to recover a lot of that information. And now that looks a lot more similar to what I saw when I was shooting. Additionally, I saw more detail in the shadows. So I'm gonna bring my shadows up and brighten them. And again, now we're returning to what I saw with my eyes. Now at this point, I think my whites are actually a little bit too far. I'm losing too much detail. So don't be afraid to hop back to a previous slider and change it. I'm just gonna bring my whites back just a hair to bring some more information back into that sky. And that is how I work those first five sliders. Exposure is overall, how bright or dark do we want the photo to be? Whites and blacks control how dark do we want the darkest thing? How bright do we want the brightest thing? And then highlights and shadows are a creative control to really help us bring our image back to what we saw with our eyes. Now the final slider that I drag is contrast. And this again is a creative control. Essentially contrast here is mid-tone contrast. How much punchiness do we want in the middle tones, those tones that are not super dark, not super bright, but right around the middle. And if you bring contrast up, you're going to get more, you bring it down, you're going to get less. I think in this case, I'm going to go up a little bit, bring a little bit more contrast into this image. So very fast, right? You think about if I wasn't blabbering, we're talking maybe 30 seconds to go through all six of those sliders. And at this point, I always do a compare view. Now in Lightroom Classic, you can hit the letter Y on the keyboard in the develop module, and that will give you a side-by-side -side before after. We wanna make sure we did a good job with this photo. In Lightroom, if you're using the newest version, we can go to the compare view down here in the lower left-hand corner, and then be sure that our compare mode up here at the top is set to before and after instead of multiple images. Before and after will show us the before on the left and the after on the right, unless of course you hit swap, and then it will flip the two. And at this point you wanna say, all right, did I make a good improvement? And I think the answer in this case is absolutely, right? Things have improved a lot. We have a lot more detail in the shadows. We have a lot more detail in the highlights and we've made a marked improvement on the picture. Next, let's talk about our color adjustments. So in Lightroom, this is available in the color panel. In Lightroom Classic, this is still part of the basic panel. Now, the idea of color is really to correct for white balance and saturation. That's the main idea. White balance is the color temperature of light how warm or cool the light is. Saturation is the intensity of color, right? Are we talking neon colors or are we talking pastel colors, right? What is the intensity or the punchiness? Again, raw images do not have in-baked saturation. So oftentimes we need to add a little bit of saturation, just like we added contrast with whites, blacks, highlights, shadows, contrast, and exposure in the earlier part of this video. So don't be afraid to take these sliders up. Now, first for me is always white balance. So I'm gonna come up to my white balance slider and I like to do this manually if it's close. I like to always tweak it a little bit. And the temperature slider is where I like to start. So temperature controls how warm or how cool our image is. And you wanna be careful here because there's two schools of thought. I like to break white balance into two main groups. There's technically correct white balance. And technically correct white balance means that the whites in the image look white, things look proper. But usually that's a starting place. I then like to layer a little bit of creative white balance where you'll actually come in and maybe warm things up a little further than you normally would or cool things down a little further to convey a certain mood or feeling in the image. So in this case, this is a sunset shot and I frankly think it could go a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna take it up. Now you don't wanna go like crazy, right? That just looks fake. But a little bit of warmth will really help it feel more like a sunset shot, look more like what you saw when you were there. I could also blue this in. And if I blew it in enough, it almost looks like early dusk, right? Or uh, early dawn, right? Early in the day, late in the evening. So we really can control time of day with our white balance control. So again, you're following along right now. I recommend on your photos, take that white balance up, take that white balance down and feel how, oh wow, this isn't just a technical thing. This actually changes the way that I look and I interact with this photo. I'll give you guys another example on white balance, right? Here's a photo that was a middle of the day, very warm shot, light streaming through the trees. 
but my white balance was set to daylight and I was in the shade. And so the image ended up too blue. So I can take that temperature slider up and warm it up. And look, if we just go to the compare view on just one slider, you can see the effect that that's having. It's insane, right? The amount of difference that one slider can make. So that's where we go in and we do our white balance control. So on this image, I'm gonna warm up a little bit. Tint is gonna control the green to magenta. Rarely are you gonna need this for outdoor photos, but if you shoot indoor under artificial light, you may need to adjust the green magenta tint as well. From here, I'm gonna come down and adjust my vibrance and my saturation. Now for me, I'm much more of a vibrance guy than a saturation guy. You can try both on both your images. There's two key differences between the two sliders. Vibrance is going to control the saturation, the intensity of the less intense colors in the image. It's gonna leave the more intense colors alone, which is really powerful. Vibrance is gonna allow you to equalize color intensity in the image. Saturation is gonna just saturate everything. So if you already have like super powerful, punchy colors and you use vibrance, it's not gonna put as much emphasis on those super punchy colors. It's gonna more bring the, the less punchy colors up. Whereas saturation is gonna just saturate everything. It's gonna go crazy. So I like vibrance because of that. I also like vibrance because it ignores skin tones a little bit better. So again, another example here, if I open this photo of Sarah and I correct the white balance, get things looking normal. In this example here, if I now use saturation, we can see that Sarah turns very red, right? She gets very pumpkin-y. Whereas instead, if I use vibrance, Sarah's skin tone remains mostly the same and the greens around her get more intense. So really we can control which slider to use. I'm really probably nine times out of 10, vibrance is the way that I choose to go. So I'm gonna give this image a little bit of vibrance to give it a little bit more punchiness. And now we have more color in the image. So again, I'm gonna to go to the compare view and see the difference between the two and we can see a fairly striking difference between our original and our final image. All right, everybody, as a final conclusion, I wanna show you how quickly this can go. I'm gonna take this photo here and we're gonna work it through the workflow. So exposure up a little bit. I'm gonna take blacks down, holding down the option key. We can see we get some speckles. I'm gonna bring whites up again, holding option, take it back until we bring our detail back. And then shadows, I'm gonna bring up. Highlights, I'm gonna bring down. Contrast, I'm gonna bring up a little bit. And then I'm gonna come down to color. We're gonna give it a little bit of warmth because this was sunset. We're gonna give it a little bit of vibrance, maybe even a little bit of saturation. And just like that, I might go back to my lights and bring down my whites a little bit to recover some of that detail. And then back to color. I think my rocks are a little bit too magenta. So I'm gonna change my tint a little bit back to green. And just like that, I'm fairly happy. So again, if I go to the compare view, we can see before on the left, after on the right. Now, I think that's a little bit over-processed. I'd probably bring back my saturation just a hair. Maybe like that looks a little bit more believable, but you can see in what a minute we went from the image on the left to the image on the right and now have a much better starting place for going into all the other creative controls in our editing toolbox. All right, everybody, as a quick summary, it's exposure, whites, blacks, highlights, shadows, contrast, then temperature, tint, vibrance, and saturation. I do it in that order on almost every single photo, and in total, you're talking one to two minutes per image for a complete edit. And again, the entire goal here is to go from the raw image out of the camera to recreating what we were seeing and encountering and experiencing when we took the photograph. All right, everybody, if you are interested in learning more about how to organize your photos in Lightroom, check out my online class down below. Hit subscribe to stay up to date with future videos. And lastly, drop a comment down below letting me know what your favorite one of these sliders are, or maybe you have a little bit of insight, something you've learned through the years that you wanna share. I'd love to hear it down below. Thanks everybody, and I'll catch you in the next one.